today's uh, computer graph tutorial. Uh, in this uh, episode, uh, we'll again go through open peripheral. So, uh, if you haven't watched the later episodes, please uh, watch them because I explain some basic open peripheral stuff. Uh, well, uh, in this episode, uh, we will go through how to read out energy information from uh, energy sources. So, uh, in this uh, case I'm using thermal expansion to uh, to show this information and uh, also I've added like uh, a bit more uh, exciting uh, contraption uh, this time so uh, instead of uh, only reading information from a battery we got some uh, a bit more advanced system going on here so uh, be right back and uh, we'll see how you can do this Okay, so uh, first let's see how how we could build this and like the actual build. Uh, same as uh, the, with the liquids, I'm uh, connecting uh, the computer computer with a modem, wired modem to uh, the different devices I want to read information from. So, uh, like last time, I'm I have a, I have connected this iron tank to the computer. Uh, I also connected th this redstone battery to the computer. Uh, and also all these engines are connected. Uh, one thing uh, with these engines and uh, probably some other blocks which you probably will get into sometimes is that you can't you can't connect a wired modem to those. So uh, that's why I use these uh, uh, peripheral proxies which is from open peripheral and uh, what they do is basically, basically makes you able to connect to these uh, engines which isn't usually uh, uh, it isn't going to work if you haven't got these peripheral proxies so then I simply connect the modem to those proxies instead and then I could uh, then I can read the information that they want from these engines uh, so uh, let's get back into some code and uh, then you can see how you could uh, read the information you want from all these things. Okay, so here I have uh, two uh, computers uh, connected to one of them is the engine and the other one is the regular uh, energy cell. Uh, you can obviously use any energy cell and probably any energy storage thingy. But uh, let's see how you can connect them. So uh, let's go into the Lua prompt. And then we do as we usually do, we wrap the peripheral. So that is back. And then we could use the list methods method from open peripheral. And here you can see we have uh, some different methods available to, available to us. So uh, we still have the get advanced methods data and the list methods, which we just did. But we also have get energy stored slot and get max energy stored slot, which is the functions we want to use. So uh, how you use them is simply doing like so. And slot, you can write a known here again and it will work. So uh, it's zero stored and uh, box energy stored. And yeah, that much energy. So uh, pretty cool. And you can do almost the same thing with this one. So first let's wrap the peripheral and then uh, do list methods. And here we have uh, more methods again. So some of these uh, methods you've seen from uh, the previous episodes. Uh, so we don't gonna care about those, but uh, as you see, you have those available here as well. So we could push stuff in and out and read uh, information from the tanks inside this engine. Uh, but we also have some uh, specific uh, methods that only works on engines, like get energy per tick, which is uh, how I cal calculate this uh, uh, RF per tick here. I read all the engines and then just uh, add them together to get how much I'm actually outputting. Uh, and we have a get max energy per tick, so yeah, you could do like how much you actually could do. Uh, here as well if you wanted to. I haven't done that here, but yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much the only 
methods that's only on engines. You also can get the energy stored and stuff in this, like the internal battery here. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything you need to uh, read information from uh, energy. So uh, let's look at how this code was done. So, uh, yeah. Let's edit this, this program. Uh, so uh, here, I first I wrap the monitor on the top. Uh, I get uh, which size the monitor is on, or which size it is, so I can uh, do some uh, calculations to get stuff in the center. Uh, I have all my peripherals in the table again. Uh, yeah, I just like it that way. So again, I have to use the names which uh, you get when you connect your modem. So uh, if you see here, I get different names so on uh, yeah when I connect and disconnect stuff. So you have to write those down. Uh, there's also a method in uh, Vanilla Computer Craft which just returns a table of all connected uh, connected. Uh, peripherals, so you could use that as, as as well, but then you have to check if you're reading um, yeah, if you got that information you want on that peripheral, but uh, yeah, in this case it isn't that many peripherals, so I just wrote them all down. So get amount and get capacity, we saw in the last episode with liquids, so it's nothing really new here. And get energy and get max energy is uh, didn't kind of new methods uh, in this episode, but uh, yeah, they're not really hard at all. You saw them when I did them there. So I just, uh, instead of having to write this all the time, I just do get energy and get max energy. So it's yeah, just uh, easier to write. And then again, uh, percentage function, which calculates the percentage. And uh, here I have the one checking all the engines, so uh, it will start with a value of zero, the tick, and then it will loop through uh, all my engines. So instead of writing or adding them uh, down here, I use a for loop, so uh, I add to the tick how much energy per tick it's producing, and then I'm returning how much in total I get in the end. Then I have a clear function for the monitor, and then again the same mon right uh, function which I had in the last episode. And then uh, the progress bar, which is pretty much uh, exactly like as last time, so I don't go through that, but uh, yeah, look at uh, the liquid episode and you will see more on how you could do this. Uh, then I have uh, a function which turns the engines on and off. So uh, if you see below the computer here, I've connected the uh, Ender IO uh, redstone stuff. And then uh, like the main eternal loop thing. So first I get uh, how much tank percent, so how much percent of the tank uh, steam or iron tank is filled with steam. And then how much the battery is filled up, and then I just uh, check if if I have more than seventy five percent steam, then I want the engines engines on. If I don't have more than that, I I'll turn them off. So uh, yeah, just some uh, yeah little fun uh, computer controlling of your uh, of your engines and uh, power su power supply and stuff. Uh, then I draw the actual uh, percent no, progress bars on the screen there. Kind of fucked there, but yeah, <laughs> we don't care. Uh, then I get the uh, or start the uh, energy tick, so I got that information. And then I just check if uh, if I've turned on the engines or not. So if engines is online, then I want to write engines online and how much energy per tick they are producing. And if it's not online, I just write engines offline. And then, um, yeah, I simply write that text to the middle of the screen. And then I sleep one and do everything again. So, uh, 
yeah, it's probably some uh, clearage issues there, but yeah, you could probably do this a lot better, obviously, but uh, still this is just a showcase on how we could uh, use open peripheral and uh, make neat power controlling stuff. So I uh, hope you liked this episode, and please subscribe and uh, comment if there's anything you're, uh, you don't get or you want a better explanation, so I'll be happy to reply to you. And if there's any suggestions on uh, what I should uh, tutorial or do a tutorial on, uh, yeah, please comment. And uh, see ya.